Now, when the, now that we have covered reactivity, we're going to look at a small subset of chemicals that are naturally occurring elements. So remember that an element is just one type of atom. So we can actually have some elements existing as elements in nature, which is very rare. So elements that have low reactivity, like the noble gases, so in this, like neon is a noble gas, can actually exist in pure form on the planet. Okay. Now, those noble gases are quite prevalent. We, we see them quite often. For instance, neon we see all the time. But a more sort of popular type of element that we see in terms of being naturally occurring are these unreactive metals. So we see a lot around the place gold, platinum and silver. So jewellery and all those other um, shiny things that we buy. We see these, but they actually exist as pure elements. So gold, we can actually mine as pure gold. So we can find these three metals, and these are the only three, these three metals that we find in pure form in nature. So we have the noble gases, and we also have these unreactive metals. And these are the types of substances that we find naturally occurring. These unreactive metals are sometimes called native metals because they don't bond with anything. They're just by themselves in the ground. So we sometimes call them native elements. Now, for every other element in the periodic table, so if you look on your periodic table, platinum, gold, and silver, and the noble gases make up like 1% or something of the periodic table in terms of the number of elements. So what about all those other ones? Well, for the rest of the elements, we usually see them combined with other elements because they have a much higher reactivity. So remember that reactions are a way for chemicals or elements to achieve stability. So the fact that we see a lot of combined elements or combined compounds means that these other elements are more unstable than gold, silver, platinum and the noble gases. We can see that they have a much higher reactivity than that subset of chemicals that we saw earlier. Compare the reactivity of the metals magnesium and gold. So if we look at the reactivity of these two, we should instantly know that they're very different. So firstly, magnesium is a much more active metal than gold. We can see that sort of straight away. So the reason is because gold is, we can find readily in pure form. However, magnesium is rarely, if ever, found in pure form on the Earth's surface. Usually it's bonded to oxygen, but it could be bonded to other things as well. But we never find it, or if we do find it, it's very, very rare, not or in pure form in the Earth's crust. So this shows us that gold is a far less reactive metal than magnesium. Okay, so gold reacts far less than magnesium because it, we can find it in pure form, whereas magnesium reacts with oxygen and other chemicals to give us magnesium compounds, so we know it's much more reactive than gold. Explain the relationship between the reactivity of an element and the likelihood of its existing as an uncombined element. Okay, so if we have an unreact or the reactivity of an element, is it related? to how likely we are to find that element in pure form. So the more reactive a chemical is, the less likely we'll find it in an uncombined state. So as the reactivity goes up, the chance of finding it as an uncombined element goes down. Okay? So most elements are chemically active, so they occur as compounds combined with other elements. Because they're so chemically active, they will react with other compounds to give you uh, other elements or compounds to give you new compounds and so we rarely find them in pure form. So the less reactive an element, the more likely we find it, uh, the more likely we are to find it as an uncombined element. For example, the inert gases or all of the members of group 8 and unreactive metals like silver, gold or platinum occur as elements in the Earth's crust, so we know that they're very unreactive. 